was crazy. <laughs> Good morning again. I am so sorry. We are having internet problems here in where I live. And it's been like this. It's 3 o'clock this morning. But I rebuke the enemy on every hand. We're going to go forth one more time. Coming from Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 5 through 8. And we're going to read St. John chapter 3 verse 16. And the word of the Lord says this. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in and relies in mankind, making weak, faulty human flesh his strength, and whose mind and heart turn away from the Lord. For he will be like a shrub in a parched desert, and shall not see prosperity when it comes, but shall live in the rocky places of the wilderness and in uninhabited salt land. Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord. For he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out in its roots by the river, and will not fear the heat when it comes. But its leaves will be green and moist, and it will not be anxious and concerned in a year of drought, nor stop bearing fruit. John 3, 16, coming from the Amplified Bible, says this, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten Son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. The word for the week is rely, relies. And I would like to leave this thought with you. The benefits of being a tree. <laughs> the benefit of being a tree. What is a benefit? Well, according to Rexford Dictionary, a benefit is something that produces good or helpful results or in effect. It is an advantage. A benefit can be financial help in times of sickness or unemployment. It can be a payment of service provided under annuity plans, a pension plan, or an insurance policy. In other words, a benefit is an idea of knowing what you will profit from or gain from something. There's one thing to know when someone has to offer, but it's another thing to know and what you will gain from it. Benefits ask the question, how will this product or this service work for me? Mm. Whenever you go seeking for employment, there are several questions that a person should consider. How long has this company been in business? Is this company expanding or is it downsizing? What are the company values? Is there a job location or relocation? Am I going to be able to recommute? Our, re, um, our commute, excuse me. Uh, what are the working hours? What are the salary? What is my responsibility? What is required of me? And lastly, what are my benefits? It is important to know that if they provide health insurance for everyone, because we know every company doesn't supply health insurance. Is there a retirement savings plan? Is there a 401k that will help me in my future? How does this company handle my vacation time and my sick time? I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm concerned about that. Am I going to have some time off? And then how much time am I going to have? Again, what are my benefits? What would I gain from this? As we look at the text this morning, God is speaking to the kingdom of Judah, which was his chosen people who repeatedly indulged themselves in sin. They knew the law. God has sent many prophets to warn them about their idolatrous and sinful ways. So instead of being devoted and obedient to God, to the one and true God, they continued to uh, build altars in high places. The land had become corrupted. And because of their idolatrous ways, their inheritance now would be plundered. God said, you see, you know, I see the sin that is in your heart. 
They were jeopardizing their benefits. You know, we may forget our sins, but our sins never forget us. God said your sins now are inscribed in your hearts. But until you ask for forgiveness and repent, your hearts are not cleansed. They will not be made new. So in other words, the kingdom of Judah now was jeopardizing their benefits. And when we look at the heart, it is the organ of reason, of an intelligence. It drives the will of man towards action. It's that place where emotion, desires begin. In fact, Jeremiah said that the human heart is the most deceitful among all things and desperately wicked. He said, who knows of it? Who really knows how bad the heart is? It's so easy now to fall into the routine of forgiveness getting and forsaking God. But God now is giving us a choice when we read Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 5 through 8. Not only that, but he's giving us a choice even now whether we will continue to sin or not. Paul said it best in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. He said that no temptation has overtaken you who is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability. But with this temptation, he also provides a way of an escape that you may be able now to endure it. In other words, you have a choice. For any temptation, you have the choice to resist it because God will give you a way out. In other words, we're in this world, but we're not of this, of this world. God goes on to say, for those who put their trust and rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from him, he said that they will be like a stunted shrub in the desert with no hope, no future, and no growth. I don't know about you, but have you ever looked at uh, uh, shrubs and bushes? Most times, the only thing that they're good for is, is to um, glorify your landscape. That's the only thing that it's good for. When you look at a shrub, a shrub has many, many stems. But when you look at a tree, there's a difference. A tree only has one stem with several branches. But when you look at the shrub, there's so many different um, branches that are going out. So, so much so that you don't even know which way you're going. But when we look at the shrub now, they are seasonal. And they strive in sunny environment. But because the people now have decided that they're going to trust in man and not depend and trust in God, God said that he would allow them to be consumed by the heat. They'd be like a, uh, um, in a desert. They'd be in a desert like a, um, like like um like a person have you ever been in a hot place many times during the year um summertime it gets so hot and it's like you're parched you just you just you're thirsty you need something to to help you along the way but god said because now you have decided to rely on man he was gonna allow the heat to consume you they will live in a barren wilderness in an uninhabited salty land that, guess what, will eventually die. I don't know about you, but we can't put our trust in man. Man will deceive you every single time. Every single time. He said, but you have a choice. You have a choice. He said, you must put your trust and your hope and your confidence in him. As John 3, 16 declared, those who put their hope and their confidence in God, he alone will save us. If you will allow God to be in charge of your plans and your destiny, you will be like the tree. You will not perish like the stunted shrub in the desert. 
That doesn't mean that you're not going to have trials and tribulation. That doesn't mean that every day is going to be a sunshiny day. But James 1 and 12 put it this way. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. Mm, mm, mm. Which God has promised to those who love him. And Peter said, at 1 Peter 5 and 10, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, mm, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So yes, we can rejoice in the hope. Therefore, we can be patient in tribulation. We can be constant in prayer. For Jesus said in, in Matthew 12 and 33, a tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, the fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, then the fruit will be bad. So when, um, so I, I want to share this with you because God has been dealing with me about this tree when I go walking. This tree now is, is by the sidewalk. And every time it rains, I see a residue and it looks like oil. At first, I thought someone was going out and I, and I knew this couldn't be true. But I thought someone was going out and they were pulling, pouring oil on the sidewalk because that's how much oil it was. And God has, every time I walk by this tree, I question it. And God had me to pay attention to this tree. Because on the outside of this tree, when I begin to observe this tree, it looks like nothing is wrong with this tree at all. Nothing. Mm. But when I begin to research the oil that was coming from the tree, it is actually sap that I'm seeing. So when it rains, it just brings it up to the surface. Mm, my God in Zion. So many times we walk around in our in our in in our attire. We walk around with our suits. We walk around with our hats. We walk around and, and it looks as though nothing is wrong. But inside the heart is damaged. Mm. So when I begin to study this tree. When I begin to look at this tree very carefully, I notice that the roots of the tree have been plowed up just a little bit. And so when it rains now, because it has a root problem, mm, the sap begin to soothe out of the tree. So that's what I was seeing. So God had me to understand that many times we try to cover up on the outside and knowing that in the inside we are tore up. <laughs> My God. But God knows our heart. Good night almighty. So as we look at this, 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 this lesson this morning, God is giving us a choice. You're either a shrub or you are a tree. He said there's only two kinds of people. He said a man is cursed when he begins to trust in another man. Not only are you cursed, but you become weak. Why? Because you have made your flesh your strength. Mm. And I don't know about anyone else this morning, but I found out that when I begin to operate within myself, I will fail every single time. But when I begin to acknowledge God in all my ways, as the scripture declare, he will direct my path. But like many of us, we have become like Judah. We rely on broken promises. We rely on man. We rely on our own intellect. We rely on God, on things and materialistic things. Many of us are relying on that stimulus check today. But I come to serve somebody notice today that God said the only way that you're going to live is that you begin to rely and trust in him. Oh, mm, my God. We have to learn to trust in him. So can I talk now about the root system? Because I told you about the tree that had uprooted roots. Now this root system of the tree was created to seek 
water. You were created, created to seek God. Your roots have been sent out. Now the word sent out means to shoot forth, to stretch out, to extend, or to direct. God says if we will trust and rely on him, he will take care of your difficulties. He'll take care of your disappointments, your grief, your illness, whatever is going on in your life. He said when you will begin to trust in me, you will have those roots that is planted in a tree. That's planted by the river. And one thing about this tree now. That's planted by the river. The storm may come. The wind may blow. Or hell may break loose. But God said. You will be like that tree. That's planted by the river. When everything is going left. He said I'll make everything right. He said all I need for you to do. Is to trust and depend on me. And I got you covered. Mm. So can I speak to the shrub this morning? Because there's still hope for you. God loves you so much. That he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes and trusts in him. Mm. You will not perish. But you will have everlasting life. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have any trials. That doesn't mean that you're not going to come up against opposition. That doesn't mean that everything is going to go your way. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be going to have to walk through some things. Because God said in order to reign with him, we got to know how to suffer with him. Mm. And so it is to the shrub this morning. God says there's still hope. If you will openly declare that he is your God and believe in all your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, he said you will be saved. And then he says you will not perish in John 3 and 16. So now let me talk to the trees. Stars may come, but you have a benefit package. The sun may come up. You may be hit on every side, but because of this benefit package now, you will not be bothered by the heat. You're not going to have a heat stroke. <laughs> You're not going to worry about being dried up. You're not going to worry about being in a drought. Even through this pandemic with everything that has happened, you may get the coronavirus, but it's not going to consume you. You may have to walk through um, um, prognosis where the doctor said that nothing else that I can do. But God said that if you will learn how to be the tree this morning, I got benefits for you. My God in Zion, and I don't know about you, but I come to understand that the race is not given to the swift, nor is it given to the strong, but it's given to the one that endureth until the end. Mm. So if you hang on in there, my God, if you look to the hills from which cometh your help, you will be like that tree that's planted by the river that should be destroyed when the storm comes. But when everything else is falling down around you, God said, I got you. I got you. So ask yourself this morning, what, uh, what benefit? Is it to you to compromise your soul by being a shrub that only comes out or only bloom when it's sunny? Well, you could be a tree and bloom all year long. You know, I've looked at the, um, the pine tree, and that was a tree that I was looking at when I went walking. And I asked my husband about this tree because I said, you know what? There's all coming from the tree. What's going on? <laughs> and I took pictures of it and I said, I'm going to bring you the picture and I'm going to show you this tree. Because it's just, I'm telling you, it's, it's mind blowing. And so I showed him the picture and he told me, he said, this is sap. Somewhere in this tree, there is a disease. It looked good. It's standing tall and pretty. 
But in the roots of the tree, there is a disease that's causing the sap to come out. The sap is what goes, it's like blood that wants to our vein. That's what a sap is to a tree. And when, when the blood stops flowing, guess what? You die. But God said, I want you to be this tree that's planted by the river. Where you will learn how to trust and lean and depend on me. I don't care what's going on in your life. You may have gotten the, the most baddest, the baddest news you could ever receive. But God said, trust in me. You will not perish. Believe in me. You will not perish. He said, you will have everlasting life. Don't be the shrub this morning. Be the tree. For there are benefits in being a tree let us pray father god we bless you this morning god we honor you lord we love you we thank you father we thank you lord god for allowing us so god to to hear you this morning god we thank you this morning that you have told us in your word that you don't want us to be the shrub you don't want us to be that bush that just stands only during the spring or summertime my God, but God, you want us to be that palm tree that when the hurricanes come in our lives, when, when the wind begin to blow in our lives, we may be not from side to side, but we'll still be standing. You want us to be like that tree that is planted by the river. My God, that when the water comes up, Although my roots should die, but because I'm planted in you, I shall live and have eternal life. So God, we thank you this morning. God, we love you. God, we thank you, Father God, for those, oh God, that are going through um, different trials, different situations in their lives. God, I pray this morning that they, Father, will seek you. My God, the root system will seek you so they can grab hold of that living water that they may never thirst again. Father, I pray now, Lord, that you will go by the hospital this morning. God, that you will be the surgeon. God, we know what has been said, but God, we know in whom we believe. And God, we thank you, Lord, for moving by your power and by your might. Now, God, we glorify you and we honor you in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. I'm so sorry about the introduction this morning. I had to restart this because the internet is in and out here. But guess what? But God. God did allow the word to go forth on this morning. So we give him glory. If you have nothing else to do tonight at 830, um, please join us as we come together and we touch and agree and we pray. Amen. And, and if you can't join us at 830 tonight, please join us on Monday for Bible study as we are still studying out of 2nd Kings chapter 17 and we will begin at verse number 3. Amen. And if you can't join us for a Bible study, come back on next Wednesday and let's see what the Lord has to say to us at 5 a.m. for Word Empowerment Wednesday. Now for Monday and tonight, we'll be on the conference call line and you can find all of that information on my Facebook page, which is Kimberly Perkins Furby. God bless you and I love you with the love of God and have a blessed and wonderful day. And remember, something great. Something great is going to happen for you. Be the tree. Don't be the shrub. Because the shrub, you're just going to dry up and die. But be the tree that's planted by the river. My God, God bless you and have a blessed day.